Hi, my name is Danny Washington. I'm an ocean advocate and TV host. You may have seen me on Exploration Nature Knows Best on Fox or as a correspondent on Mission Unstoppable on Saturday mornings on CBS. I've made a career as a science communicator, which is someone who utilizes different forms of communication like television shows, podcasts, written articles, and other ways to connect with different audiences and share complex scientific information. I specialize in marine conservation and have dedicated my life to amplifying the urgent message about the inextricable connection between humans and the ocean. <laughs> I'm also passionate about drastically increasing the participation of traditionally underrepresented groups in STEM fields like Black, Indigenous, people of color, and I think it's absolutely critical that every voice should be heard when it comes to understanding the world around us. Oh, and also, I happen to be a mermaid too. Take a look at this. doesn't belong in the ocean. <laughs> 2020 has revealed numerous connections between the health of our planet and the health of humanity. The climate is rapidly changing before our eyes, but I believe it's not too late. Right now, the world needs brilliant scientists to step up and help lead the way by innovating solutions that are scalable. It's definitely a huge task, but not impossible. We need to include diverse perspectives and varied experiences to craft the livable future for generations to come. For a long time, many groups of people have been left out of the conversation, but I feel confident that your generation is going to change this paradigm and will become the inventors, innovators, and creative minds that will help us elevate toward a more just and sustainable existence on Earth. Like I mentioned earlier, I've focused my energy on protecting the ocean. By sharing stories about my adventures underwater, I aim to inspire those watching to actually want to explore the ocean themselves too. Now here's some footage from one of my favorite trips ever to Holshan Marine Reserve in Belize. Now we went to this place called Shark Ray Alley and guess what? We met up with sharks and we saw stingrays as well. Uh, so the primary species of shark that we saw here were nurse sharks. And nurse sharks are cool because they're a bit different than other shark species. They spend a lot of time at the bottom at, in the benthic area where they sit and sleep and rest during the daytime. But at night, they become super active as hunters where they're going after things like crab and lobster and other fish. Now, they're different from the sharks because they're able to pump water over their gills and that allows them to sit in place. But as you can see here, they're super active. So this particular group of nurse sharks are a little bit different than the others. We know so little about under the waves, yet humans continue to extract and exploit the ocean for its many resources. Since we humans are terrestrial beings, currently there aren't enough systems in place to monitor the open ocean and enforce the international laws that were created to protect the ocean from being destroyed, from things like illegal fishing practices, dumping of pollution, plastic, and other destructive human activities. What many don't understand is that we are completely dependent on the ocean and we need it to maintain our livelihood. From the air that we breathe to the food that we eat, the ocean has played a role in all of that in some shape or form. We need a healthy ocean to be healthy humans. We must accelerate our marine science research to fully understand how to better protect our life support system. One of the biggest ways we can protect the ocean is through establishing marine protected areas. In addition to altering our behaviors on land, for example, transitioning to clean energy sources and ending our dependence on single-use plastics, MPAs are an essential piece of the puzzle to ensure the survival of the sea. According to the National Ocean Service, MPAs may be established to protect ecosystems preserve cultural resources such as shipwrecks and archaeological sites, or sustain fisheries production. There are many different types of marine protected areas in the U.S., including marine sanctuaries, 
estuarine research reserves, ocean parks, and marine wildlife refuges. This doesn't mean it only protects wildlife. It protects places that are important to coastal communities who have relied on the ocean for their survival for many generations. So here you can see me again in my mermaid fin, just kind of lounging in the water, but beneath me is a juvenile sea turtle. Now this is a green sea turtle. The cool thing is about this destination, this is St. Croix. This is a part of the U.S. Virgin Islands. And in Frederickstead, one of the small towns on the island, there's a huge pier. And underneath the pier, on most days, you'll find these baby sea turtles just kind of hanging out and swimming and doing their own thing, feeding on seagrass and hanging. It was so much fun being underwater with them because they're super graceful and peaceful and wonderful to watch underwater. Now there are seven species of sea turtles in the world and the U.S. Virgin Islands has a chance to experience three of those species including the green sea turtle, the hawksbill sea turtle, and the leatherback sea turtle which is the largest of all seven. They're all cold-blooded animals and so they have to breathe air but they also have to regulate their temperature by going to the surface and they also lay their eggs on the beach. Other types of MPAs in the U.S. include national parks, national wildlife refuges, and state areas for the protection of habitat, fish, and wildlife. Now, that was all about areas near the United States, but what about the rest of the world? Well, here is the big global goal. Our goal is to achieve the protection of at least 30% of the world's oceans by the year 2030. The United Nations has proclaimed a decade of ocean science for sustainable development in the year 2021 to 2030, yeah, starting next year, to support the efforts to reverse the cycle of decline in ocean health and gather ocean stakeholders worldwide to begin a common framework that will ensure ocean science can fully support countries in creating improved conditions for sustainable development of the ocean. I wanted to share one success story that I had the opportunity to witness firsthand. A couple of summers ago, I traveled to the west coast of Mexico to a place named Cabo Pulmo. It was designated as an MPA on June 15, 1995, when Mexican President Zedillo Ponce de Leon declared 7,111 hectares of waters surrounding Cabo Pulmo a national marine park. It became a no-take zone, and wildlife has flourished ever since. Since 1995, scientists have observed a 400% increase in biomass within the park, meaning the total mass of the organisms living in a specific area. So guess what? Fish also swim. So wildlife doesn't stay within the protected area that we mark it to be. They migrate like they normally do, which leads to spillover, and that means the animals and other areas surrounding the, that area also benefit. Speaking of swimming of fish, here's a video of one of the dives I did while I visited Cabo Pulmo. Welcome to Cabo Pulmo. You can see the beautiful stretch of beaches here in Cabo Pulmo Marine Park. It's about five miles long, and all along the shoreline are lots of dive sites. So the guide was taking us along the shoreline, and finally we arrived at our destination, and we were able to jump in the water with all of our scuba gear. Now this is my favorite part of scuba diving. It's the big rollback. So you hold onto your mask and your regulator and you fall back in the water and it's like you're going into another universe. As soon as we went down into the water, we found this massive school of big eye jacks. Now this is a signature feature of Cabo Pomo Marine Park. It's wonderful to see hundreds, if not thousands of fish schooling together in one giant mass. It's like from above, it looks like a black spot, like as if you're seeing a whale underwater. But when you dive down, you realize it's tons of fish swimming together as one.
Cabo Pomo National Marine Park is located in Baja California Sur, which is a peninsula. On one side of the peninsula faces the Pacific Ocean, and the other side faces the Sea of Cortez, which a long time ago, Jacques Cousteau, who is a famous ocean explorer and naval officer, he named it the Aquarium of the World because it was just bursting with life. Now this area and this marine park is managed by a couple of families who originally were fishermen. They based all of their resources on what they could pull out of the sea. Now, those families are the managers of keeping everything safe within the marine park. And it's such a cool concept because these families, this is where they're from, this is their home, and now they've been charged with the task of protecting it. And they've done such a wonderful job. And now it's a place for thousands of tourists and, and visitors to come and see and experience the beauty of their marine park. This is my, me and my friend Angela diving underwater and we had a chance to also see some of their diverse coral reefs, which were beautiful, full of reef fish. Uh, we also have gorgonians or sea fans that you can see they're kind of swaying in the water, hard coral and some soft coral, lots of angel fish and wrasse, and just so much fun to dive on reefs like this because it feels like a, a city. These little fish are just moving around, doing their thing, feeding and and just living and it's such a privilege to go down in the water and observe all of this. You're looking at a school of Big Eye Trevally, but also commonly known as Great Trevally, Big Eye Jack or Dusky Jack. This slow moving school of fish was so dense, I couldn't even see the sunlight surface of the water. It was really a cool feeling to be amid, in the middle of all of those fish. Currently, less than 0.1% of the world's ocean is made up of no-take areas. There are about 400 MPAs in more than 65 countries and territories, but this protects only about 6% of the Earth's oceans. We need much more. There are innumerable benefits to marine protected areas. Everything including job opportunities for those who live near the area, conscious tourism where tourists come and enjoy the beauty, and also increase fish stocks. So, the ocean needs your help. Will you join the journey and help us protect 30% of the ocean by 2030? This is our chance. All right, I wanna take you to one of my favorite places in the world, the Galapagos Islands. This is an archipelago of about 13 major volcanic islands located approximately 1,000 kilometers from mainland Ecuador. Okay, so you've probably noticed there's something else in the frame with me swimming in the water. This is a Galapagos sea lion. And it's such an extraordinary experience to swim with a sea lion because they're super playful, curious, and they come over and look at you. And of course, we have to respect their space and make sure that um, we're not interfering with what they're doing. But this, this particular pup was awesome. Um, we were about to get out of the water and then it just came over to swim with us. And we were hanging out with it for a while and just had a blast. <laughs> The Galapagos Islands are a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a perfect example of what happens when you create marine protected areas. So for our last destination, I wanted to take us back to Belize. So you can see this footage I captured of a southern stingray swimming through the reef. Now stingrays are cousins of sharks. You can tell that their body is a lot different. It's flat and kind of diamond shaped. In the back, they've got that long tail. Now at the base of the tail is a venomous barb that they use for self-protection and self-defense against predators. After swimming with the Southern Stingray, I had a chance to go and see the rest of the reef where I encountered blue striped grunts and Sergeant Majors, the fish you see with the black, yellow, and white stripes, plus lots and lots of corals, hard coral, soft coral, and sea fans, or gorgonians. Known as the rainforest of the sea, coral reefs are extremely biodiverse, and over 25% of all fish species depend on healthy coral reefs. All the more reason for us to protect 30% of the ocean by 2030. Thanks for watching my presentation. Be well and stay safe, everyone.